You need to take care of it. To protect your skin. You need to protect yourself. You don't want to go through what I have gone through. Skin cancer. It is the most common form of cancer in the United States today. Over 3.5 million cases and 2 million people are reported annually. When people think about cancer, they think of brain cancer or lung cancer or breast cancer or any of the other cancers that are publicized in society today. They don't necessarily think about skin cancer. I know when I talk to my friends, they think that they're not at risk for developing skin cancer. But the truth is, every single one of us is at risk to developing skin cancer every single day. But before we go on to talk about skin cancer and the ways to prevent it, we should talk about the skin. The skin is the body's first line of defense against heat, sunlight, injury, and infection. Skin also helps control body temperature and helps the body get rid of excess water and salts, which happens when you sweat. The skin is made up of several layers, the epidermis, the dermis, and the subcutaneous fat layer, also known as the hypodermis. The most important layers, though, are the epidermis and the dermis. The epidermis is the layer of skin which we see every day. It is made up of fat, scale-like cells called squamous cells. Under the top layer of the epidermis, you find round cells called basal cells, and the lower part of the epidermis contains melanocytes. The layers after the epidermis is the dermis layer. The dermis contains blood vessels, lymph vessels, hair follicles, sweat glands, and sebaceous glands. Skin cancer begins in the top layer of the skin, or the epidermis. There are three different types of skin cancer basal cell carcinoma, squamous cell carcinoma, and melanoma. Basal cell carcinoma is the most common type in fair skinned people. It usually shows up on the face, ears, scalp, neck, or upper body. It will appear as a red patch, a pink, red, or white bump that is shiny or pearly, a crusty, open sore that will not heal, or a scar-like area. Basal cell carcinoma grows very slowly and usually does not spread to other parts of the body. It is treated by removing the spot or freezing it. Squamous cell carcinoma is the second most common type of skin cancer in fair skinned people. It is caused by too much exposure to UV rays from the sun or indoor tanning booths. It appears as a bump or scaly red patch on the face, neck, arms, scalp, ears, lip, or mouth. It is slow moving cancer that can spread to other parts of the body. Treatment for this includes surgery and radiation therapy. Melanoma is the least common type of skin cancer, but is the most serious. It begins in the melanocytes, which are found in the epidermis. Melanoma can spread quickly and spread to other parts of the body. It is caused by too much exposure to UV rays such as the sun and indoor tanning beds and sun lamps. It appears as a mole or in or around an existing mole. In men, melanoma is often found between the shoulders and hips or the head and neck area. In women, melanoma often develops on the lower legs as well as between the shoulders and hips. It can be treated with surgery, chemotherapy, and radiation therapy. During my research, I found Dr. Jeff Ashley, a dermatologist out of Burbank, California, who created Sun Safety for Kids, an educational video that teachers can show their students in the classroom protecting their skin from skin damage. I scheduled a meeting with Dr. Ashley and I asked him a few questions. My name is Jeff Ashley. I'm a dermatologist. Well, as a dermatologist, um, we see a tremendous amount of skin cancer. We seem to be seeing more every year. It's a lifetime accumulation of sun damage uh, that leads to skin cancer. So we would like for children to start being sun safe um, as early in life as possible. The ultraviolet radiation that is emitted by uh, tanning beds um, is uh, just like that from the sun in the sense that it is cancer causing. Um, and in some ways, um, it's even stronger uh, than the radiation from the sun. And so we have seen already an increase in the number of melanomas, particularly in young women um, who started using uh, tanning salons or tanning beds at a relatively early age. So um, I would very much like to see artificial tanning go completely away. Um, I very strongly discourage anyone from ever using uh, a tanning bed for cosmetic reasons of <clears throat> trying to darken their skin color. 
um, because it does uh, irreversible damage to the skin. Uh, that can lead to skin cancer later on. You've only got one skin, and you've only got one chance to really to make it last your whole life. So you need to take care of it, um, or you'll seriously regret it a little bit further down the road um, if it's developing skin cancers and blotches and wrinkles. So um, those of us adults who already have had skin cancer and problems we feel very sad that we can't go back and relive our childhood and try to be more careful. But you have the opportunity during your younger years um, to make the smart decision to take good care of your skin so that it's going to last you and, and keep you looking good throughout your life. Joanne Davidson is a neighbor of mine who went through skin cancer. I met up with her and she showed me the proper clothing to wear when you want to be sun safe. When I was 18, I sailed around Australia with my, my parents and my younger brother. So I spent a lot of time in, in a bikini. About two years later, someone took a picture and I was sitting on the ground and my mother-in-law, actually I think we were married at that point, or she's since become my mother-in-law, said to me when she showed me the picture, she said, I didn't realize that you had a mole on your leg that was that dark. And so I took it, took the picture in with me to the doctor um, my, just my regular doctor. I wasn't seeing any specialists at that time and he said, oh, I don't like the way that one looks. So he sent me to a different doctor, a specialist. He took a look and he said, it doesn't look good. It was really, really dark and the moles that I have on the rest of my body are pretty light. So he cut it out. He said he went a little deep to make sure that he thought he got it all and he was pretty sure he did. They told me you have to get this thing taken care of and what they wanted to do is they wanted to biopsy the skin around where they took the mole and um, so they biopsied that they did like a large scoop out of my leg and then I had to have skin grafts for my other leg um, so I was in the hospital for a couple of weeks not able to walk while the skin grafts took and then they had to um, had to take care of all of that which was really painful um, and then taught me to walk again and it was a it was a couple of months before I was back to normal. When I go swimming, if I go to the beach, I will wear a bathing suit and then over it, I would wear my swim pants, which are SPF uh, 50, um, and my rashi, my swim shirt. And that's mainly because when I go to the beach, I actually like to go boogie boarding and I like to stay out in the water a little longer than would be the best to do. So maybe about half an hour. So I'll wear those and then when I come in, out of the water and I go and sit back down and I'm always under my umbrella or in my chair, I would then over the top either be wearing a sarong which is completely covering my legs and I'm under the shade, or if I want to play with the kids at the water's edge, I would put on my SPF pants, which are just long white pants, um, and I would put on the top over it which has gaps and it has venting so that it's very very lightweight it does not feel too hot so even in the middle of summer at the beach it's actually quite comfortable it has a hood um, when I also go out in the water even though I look like a bit of a dork <laughs> I'll wear my swim hat because that way my face gets some extra protection as well. At the City of Moran Park's annual Really for Life I did presentations promoting being sun safe and protecting yourself from skin damage to kids at the kids camp. After I finished my presentation, I went onto the track to do some interviews, hand out skin cancer awareness ribbons, and offer free sunscreen to the people who are walking to prevent cancer. Do you need sunscreen? I was shocked to discover how many people were not wearing sun safe clothing and not wearing sunscreen. On top of that, I was taken aback at the number of people who refused free sunscreen. Relay for Life is an event to stop and prevent the spread of cancer, but the entire day, people were putting themselves at risk to develop cancer. One of my main motivations to do this project is that my grandfather, Jim McGinnis, is battling melanoma. I set up a video interview with him over the internet and I asked him some questions about it. My name is James McGinnis and I'm 79 years old. I'd say roughly about 20 basal cells, squamous cells, and uh, I had a melanoma removed from my back about four or five years ago that 
that they got the whole thing at that time. Have my treatments been painful? Uh, at times, yes. Uh, basically, the, the original treatment for the melanoma, which started up in my arm, uh, I had one operation for that and it came back. I had to have a second operation where they took a whole piece out of my arm and they had to take a piece of a skin graft from my leg. That was very, very painful. But the regular treatments with chemo, it's not really painful, it's just the after effects. When they told me in May that uh, none of the chemos were working anymore and I had to find a clinical trial, they gave me a pill, one pill a day for 28 days to keep the melanoma, you know, from, from spreading as best as possible. Two weeks of taking that pill, and I was like a zombie. I get up out of bed, go sit in a chair. I couldn't eat because I had cut the sore on my tongue, and then part of that side effect of the pill was uh, sores in my mouth would not heal. So I had to take like a, a Novocaine liquid in order to eat anything, just so I could eat because the pain of the tongue was so bad. Uh, and then to get to the point where you can hardly walk anymore. And you can't even sit on a damn computer <laughs> and read. That's what it gets to you. What would I tell young people today about avoiding skin cancer? Use the number 50, 50, when you go out. Uh, uh, of, of suntan lotion if you're very fair skinned. If you're not fair skinned, then a 30 will do. Uh, but apply it, apply it, and keep reapplying because you don't want to go through what I have gone through. Each year there are more new cases of skin cancer than the combined incidences of the cancers of the breast, prostate, lung, and colon. Statistics say that one in five Americans will develop skin cancer in the course of a lifetime. People need to realize that skin cancer is very serious and that it may be a reality for them in their future. They need to realize that the bronze look is not worth the pain and the suffering that they may endure. I hope that in the completion of this project, the people in my community will realize that you don't need to tan to be considered cool or sexy, and I hope they realize the dangers of tanning and skin damage and will take measures to protect their skin.